Glory to God. How many know God says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge? Now, knowledge means truth. Knowledge that is not understood is not truth. So you can read the Bible, know all the page numbers, right? You can quote every scripture and not understand what you're doing. Then it's not truth and it doesn't free you. Amen? Has everybody got it? Amen. So it's truth that frees us, isn't it? Because truth is light. And there's a place where God is trying to get us and to where we know that this light shines. To where we know that the truth is what sets us free and others free. Not by what we assume or what we think, but it's truth. It must become tangible to you. Totally tangible. Truth is tangible. You know, truth is a person. Hello, he's called the spirit of truth. He's a person. You know, the word of God, it says the word became flesh. It's a person. You're not reading the word of God. Hello? Does anybody understand what I'm saying? You're supposed to have relationship with the true word, of the person of the word. This is called logos. Logos. It means written. That's why the word became flesh. So what they did was they wrote. Of course, they couldn't contain everything, could they? The Bible says that, you know, they couldn't contain all the things that Jesus did. But there is that person where it's a personal, really personal relationship. You know what takes personal relationship? Death to yourself. Go to, uh, I think it's John 10. <laughs> John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Would you read it with me? Is everybody there? Amen. Glory to God. The thief does not come... Except to what? Steal. Steal and kill and to destroy. Who's the thief? Satan. Satan in his kingdom, right? He doesn't come but to kill, to except to steal, kill, and destroy. How many of y'all know that? How many have, has it been happening to you? <laughs> that means the enemy's after you. You know why the enemy's after you? Because he sees the hand of God on you. He doesn't have to try to kill the ones that are already serving him. He's trying to kill the ones that aren't. Does everybody understand that? So, you know, so many times, so many people come to the Lord and they go, man, you know, I've never had so much trouble in my life. Of course not. Before you were the trouble. Now the trouble's coming against you. There's a difference. <laughs> the thief does not come except to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus says, but I have come that they may what? Have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Abundantly, How many of y'all know what God wants to have you? He wants to give you an abundant life. And it's just not about filling your storehouses with cash so you can retire. It's about abundant life. Abundant life is freedom. Total freedom is abundant life. A place where you can totally trust God. No matter what. Where you ain't trying to fix it. Where you're in that place where you're not moved by circumstances. But circumstances are moved by you. There's that place where it's no longer you that live, but he that lives. It's that place where God is trying to bring us to where we can have abundant life. Totally abundant. It's not about financial abundancy. That's a part of it. That comes. You know, there's a lot of people who are blessed financially. You know what? But they're miserable. Amen? It's not what it is. Abundant life means abundant life in the Spirit. In the Spirit, where there's that freedom, where there's that flow of the Spirit, where there's that move of the Spirit, where you're listening to the voice of God, where you have that relationship, where you know when things are happening, you can give each other a high five. Because there's a relationship. Where you know that He's not only Daddy, but He's Mommy, He's Sister, He's Brother, He's Friend, He's Teacher, He's Comforter, He's Healer and Deliverer. Where you're in that relationship. This is abundant life because when you now are associating with a tangible life giver. And that can only be given when you die. Turn to John 12 while we're here. John 12. 
John chapter 12. So I want to welcome everyone to the house of death. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's why I said it's a good night to die, right? John chapter 12 and verse something. Verse 20. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. They were coming up for the feast. Everybody there? Then they came to Philip, who was from Basidia of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered him, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces what? Much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. So we see here, before there can be life, there first must be death. So, tonight's teaching is out, or life, it's called life out of death. Life out of death. Because there is life out of death. There is life out of your death. Is everybody with me? First Corinthians 15. Life out of death. Woohoo! First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Is everybody there? Uh, and verse thirty five. Hallelujah. But someone will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. Read that with me. Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. So how many know you got to die? Amen. you got to die to yourself before you can become alive. In other words, you must die to self before Christ can have life. That's why it's called resurrection life. If you're walks, constantly walking death to yourself, then you're walking in resurrection power. Amen. Made alive out of death. The world fights to stay alive to feed the flesh. Those of the world fight to stay alive to feed the flesh. But you and I stay alive to fight the enemy. We're here to rescue and bring glory to His name. We're staying alive so we can fight the enemy. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's glory. Remember, Jesus' purpose was to come into the world and what? Die. Die. For me and you. That was his goal. And on his way to his successful goal, his final accomplishment on the cross, he will expose the enemy. He did all kinds of works for me and you that it can be written and passed down. He went into the garden and fought three times. He fought for your spirit, your soul, and your body. Everybody got it? He fought for your spirit, your soul, and your body. The ultimate goal is the day that the final completion of our redemption is when we get a glorified body. So you got to understand something. You and I were already dead. And we are brought alive. The Bible tells us that it's a counter for man to die once. 
Well, if you died with Christ, then you died. So you're already starting your eternal life. It's already going on, man. It's already happening. So the world fights to stay alive to feed the flesh. But we as God's children fight to stay alive so we can fight the enemy. Has everybody got it? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians four. Oh, in verse seven. Would you read it with me? Second Corinthians four and verse seven. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Who's we? The body of Christ, right? All of us here. We have this treasure. <laughs> There's a treasure. Amen. The King of glory. Holy Spirit. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Well, the only way that it's gonna, not going to be of us and the power of God is if we deny us. Remember something very powerful that uh, Brother John, John the Baptist said. When Jesus showed up on the scene, he said what? I must decrease that he can increase. He wasn't kidding. I must decrease that he can increase. In verse 8, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Christ also may be manifested in our body. Now listen, we're made of three parts. Remember, Jesus paid the price. He prayed three times. He had to die three times in prayer. Remember, three times He went and prayed before He went to the cross. Remember when He said, Father, if it's possible, let, me, let this cup pass me by, but not my will, your will. He said it three times. So you and I are made of three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit communes with the spirit world and God. Your soul interprets what's being spoken and commune. And your body does the works. In other words, what you hear, what you what you hear is translated and interpreted, and then your body does it, right? So it says here, so that the life of Christ also may be manifested in our body. Why? Because your spirit communes, your soul interprets, and your body does the works. It's the one that's submissive. It's the one that's moving. It's the one that's going. But who's motivating it? The Spirit of God or the unclean spirit. One or the other. So by you denying yourself, you're allowing the Spirit to motivate you. Does everybody understand that? As you deny yourself, you're allowing the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to motivate you. That's called death to self. Death to self. Power of God be not us, but of the Holy Spirit. So the life of Christ can manifest in our body, right? So that means the only way that the power of God is going to truly manifest through us is if we die. Didn't the power manifest through Christ? How? He died. Then he what? Rose. Resurrection power. So we see one of the first things that has to happen is we must die to self. You know, God does not commune with self. He communes with His child. He doesn't commune with self. Self is what was me, 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 and then more me. And when that's done, me, 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 me. Then it goes from me to I. So death to self must be a Every day, every decision, everything you're going to do, every move you make must be a death to self. Self cannot be involved in it. Does everybody understand that? In other words, what's, how, what am I going to get out of it? 
Jesus did not come to take, he came to give. And that's how you and I got to live. So that we live according to Christ. You know, we all started this walk by saying, I'm letting go and letting God. We really didn't even know who God was. But we, he, we knew he was out there somewhere. I mean, that's how I started my walk. All right, I'm letting go and letting God. Everybody said, man, you need to let go and let God. So I did. But I meant it. Because if I, I was like, if there's really a God out there, I'm letting go. Because I know that this life I've lived is nothing but destructive to myself and to anyone I got around. My only escape was death. So if I've got to go meet my maker, I better get things right. So I'm letting go and letting God. As I began to continue to do that, I began to get honest. Guilt began to leave. I began to stay honest. I'm letting go. No matter what came across my path, I would want to, oh, I want to fix this. Nope, nope. I'm letting, I'm not putting my little dirty paws in anything again. I'm letting go and I'm letting God. Didn't know who he was. He probably heard it so many times. He said, man, I got to go visit this kid. If I hear this one more time, <laughs> I'm letting go and letting God. It's it. I'm down there. <laughs> it was a constant letting go, letting God. My carnal understanding was out in left field. But I knew that there was something more. I knew there was something I was supposed to do. There's something more about this life. Something more. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know what it was. So you know what I did? I let go and I let God. I still don't know what I'm supposed to do or what I'm supposed to be when I grow up. But right now, this is what God has put in front of me. I'm not concerned what I'm supposed to do. I don't live on a need to know basis. I live in faith. If he says that I believe it. He says if I... Acknowledge him will establish my steps. That's letting go and letting God. He says, if I give him my works, he'll establish my thoughts. I'm letting go and letting God. And when that conviction comes, we must let go and let God. When that guilt comes, we better find out where it came from. Hello? God doesn't put guilt on us. He puts conviction. He doesn't put condemnation on us. He puts conviction. Conviction is much different than guilt. Guilt hounds you and weighs you down. Conviction, like, hurts and lets go. Hurts and lets go. And it's a gentle nudge. Come on, you know you're supposed to do this. Come on, you know, you know what you're supposed to do. That's conviction. The guilt and condemnation goes, bam, beat you. But my daddy's not a beater. He's a rescuer. He's a, not a child abuser. <laughs> He's a healer. He's a lover. He's a giver. And he loved me so much that he gave his only son. His only begotten son. You know, he had to sacrifice one day he could have more. And this is where we stand. In the more. Oh, hallelujah. Where did I say? Here you go. <clears throat> Second... Oh, we're already done? <laughs> Do we finish this? Okay, let's try this again. Verse 11. Would you read it with me? For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. In other words, as death, if you're constantly dying, then life is manifesting. Does everybody got it? So then there is life out of your death. Everyone say, there's life, life. Out, of my death. out of my death. Say that in the morning when you get up too, okay? Romans 6. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6.
So we see that there must be death to self. Amen? In verse 1 it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now sin means what? Presence of evil. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Therefore, we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that Christ, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should what? Walk in the newness of life. Why? Because we are accepting not only His death, but we are agreeing that we died with Him. Verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of His death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection. Why? Because death to self brings resurrection power. Total power. You know what the power is? To become a witness. You know what the power is? Is to say no to temptation. You know what the power is? Is to say yes to Him. In verse 7, or let's see, 6, Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. In other words, if you have died to self, you are free from sin. So, <laughs> so everybody got it? So you and I must, there must be death to sin, right? And how do you do that? By dying to self. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over Him. For the death that He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life that He lives, He lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. So you must reckon yourself. You must acknowledge yourself to be dead to sin. You must take authority. Take authority over that sin. Sin means presence of evil. So when the impression of the enemy comes, hopefully you're dead before it gets there. Do you ever try to talk to a dead man? Doesn't say too much. In fact, he doesn't say anything. Doesn't even breathe. I mean, he's dead. You know why people get offended? Because they ain't dead yet. So you can tell the measure of your death by your trials and tribulations. You freak out every time something's up? Wow, what am I going to do? Fear is an activator of your flesh. Hello? Fear will keep you alive like you've never been alive before. <laughs> Fear. Oh, I'm telling you. That's the pipeline to the flesh. Fear. Activates everything. And I'm, fear of anything. You can have fear of pleasing man. You can have fear of uh, losing your possessions. You can have fear of losing anything. You can, fear. Some people still sleep with their night light on. Fear. Fear is a killer. Fear. It's amazing that, you know, one of Satan's greatest weapons is deception and his power is what? Fear. Fear. So if his power is activating in you, then the power of Christ is denied. Has everybody got it? Satan's power is fear. If fear is activating in you, then it's denying the power of Christ. That's why we must constantly deny ourselves so that the power of Christ can be manifested. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to Christ, to God, and Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. So it's our responsibility not allow it to have dominion in us. 
How do you do that? You stay dead. Death comes by relationship. One of the major things that death comes by is prayer. If you're not an individual that prays, death will not come. Prayer produces death because prayer is communion with God. The number one thing that produces death is prayer. The number two thing that produces death is worship. Worship. That's why you've got to become a worshiper. You let it all go. I don't care if you sound like a cow. Or a laughing hyena. I don't care. Either does God. He knows your tone. Everybody else does too, but that's okay. That's why he says, seek me with all you have. Seek me with all of your heart. You know, so many people are afraid to seek God. Some people are afraid to even ask God. They're afraid that the answer may be no. But see, he wouldn't hold anything back from his children. The Bible says that he, he desires to give us the kingdom of God. Remember, you and I were rescued from hell. Eternal damnation we were rescued from. We shouldn't have any grumbling or complaining if we'll just stay in an attitude of gratitude. We are, are alive in Christ and dead to self. The Bible says those who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. So as you stay led by the Spirit, your flesh stays crucified. It's when your flesh comes off that cross and starts activating, and let me tell you, it jumps off the cross with fear. Did you ever see an elephant jump from a mouse? I mean, that little oochie toochy little mouse make this big 22,000 whatever pound elephant dance. It's amazing how an elephant can be afraid of a mouse. But man, you get a mouse in a cage of elephants and those guys are all doing the Watusi. It's phenomenal. But that's what it's like also. I mean, the, the voice of the stranger just comes around and starts shooting off to try and get us bound by fear. And what that does is activate your flesh. And it denies the power of Christ. Has everybody got it? It's important that we understand this. Fear will disqualify the power of God. Okay, we know there's a lot of things associated with fear. Worry, stress, anxiety. Woe is me. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Glory to God. Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Would you read it with me? If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. In other words, put your focuses on according to the will of God. It doesn't mean you're going to walk around with your head looking up in the sky all day. It means you're putting your, your, your focus on the things that are related to Christ. It, 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 listen, so you're at work and you're working and so many things are going on. Of course, it doesn't mean that you're going to lose sight of your job and hurt yourself. You're to focus on your job, but every decision, everything behind it, you're, you're now laboring unto the Lord. Your decision that's going to make, when, especially when you have to commute with human beings, flesh creatures, it has to be a Christ-like. Let me tell you something. How you deliver something to someone is some of the most important things. How you speak to someone. Are you delivering love or condemnation? Are you delivering division and strife? Are you, are you putting wood on the fire and trying to stir some garbage up? Are you exposing when you shouldn't be? Amen? How you deliver something. The Bible tells us a soft answer to an individual. A soft answer will quiet someone, will settle them. 
but a harsh answer will cause strife. Amen? So how you deliver something to someone. You know why people have to go, Argh! sometimes? They're trying to express themselves and protect themselves. They're actually are afraid of being exposed sometimes. Fear. It's like a lion trying to protect itself. And we know that when fear grips in, then what denies? The power of Christ is denied. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 3, read it with me. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Everybody say, I'm dead. I'm dead. And my life is in Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears... Now, say that again. When Christ, who is our life, appears... Say it again. When Christ, who is our life... Our life. Christ is our life. You are not life without Christ. That's why life comes out of death. When Christ, who is our life, appears... That's glorious then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, Malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. Is all and in all. So we see here there's got to be death to self, death to sin, and death to your members. And death to your thoughts. You can always ask yourself, who told me that? Why am I acting in this way? What do I have this desire? Who told me that? Remember, your fight is not against flesh and blood, but powers of darkness. It's amazing how we still think we're fighting one another. Well, you did that, and you did this, and... It's got nothing to do with you. It's got something to do with self. Always self. Anything that happens with us in our life, we always need to go to God and say, Lord, show me about me. Or else he, what he does is he looks at us as the one man that comes before the throne of God and says, Lord, I fast twice a week. I do this. I'm a goody. I tithe. And I, do, I don't do nothing. And the other man comes up and beats his chest and says, Lord, have mercy upon me. God looks at the one that says, Lord, have mercy upon me. Not the other one who boasts of what he does. Amen. Has everybody got that? Amen. The Bible says, humble yourself in the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you. And it says he resists the pride. The proud. He resists them. So become, we, you and I must become accountable and responsible. It's nobody else's fault the way we're do what we're doing. It's ours. We're the one that make the final decision, don't we? We're the one that make that choice. You and I could be either miserable or happy. We could blame everybody else for our garbage and of our past or even our circumstances around us. We can even begin to blame people for our future. Yeah, well, such and such wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't be in this circumstance. I get many people that come to my class in jail. Boy, I was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. I said, well, you're at the right place at the right time now. <laughs> so you did something right, praise God. Hallelujah. So there must be death to self, death to sin, death to your members, and death to your thoughts. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Is everybody all right? Are you getting it? Death comes by prayer and relationship. Death comes by worship. Death comes by revelation of God's Word from His Spirit where He begins to expose us. 
1 Corinthians 6. Oh, hallelujah. Um, verse 15, I think. Yeah. Would you read it with me? <clears throat> Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Ooh. Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that you are the body, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Everybody say, I'm not my own. I am not my own. For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Everybody say, I'm not my own. I'm not my own. I don't own anything. I, don't own anything. I have been bought, have been bought. By, the by the price that He paid for me. He owns me. I don't own anything. Has everybody got it? Why? Because we're dead. See, the only way that you can have everything is to be dead. Because now you're joined with Him. Does that sound strange? You try and tell that to the world. They're going to throw tomatoes at you. Yeah. Or try and have you locked up. So when the devil tries to say something to you and kill you, tell him you can't kill something that's already dead. So why should we fear? Wait a minute. What am I afraid of dying for? You can't kill something that's already dead. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. So you and I are joined with the Lord. In His death and resurrection, we are bought with a price and it's no longer our life. Go to Philippians 3. Oh, to God be the glory. Thank you, Master. Philippians chapter 3. In verse 7. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7. Anybody got a page number? Philippians chapter 3. In verse 7. Is everybody there? Glory to God. Would you read it with me? But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. You know what he did? He denied himself. He brought all the things that he had gained and, and he gave it all up for Christ. He gave it all up for the anointing. He said, you know what? All this stuff, man, I give it up for God's presence. You know, as we were worshiping and, and, and I was asking the Lord just to let His presence touch everyone and to fill this place. And I began to say, Lord, we're, we're fighting for Your presence. And He says, you know, my name is above all names. My word is above my name and my presence above, is above everything. Amen. My presence. And the only way to get God's presence in your life is to deny yourself. My name is above all names. My word is above my name and my presence is above everything. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I love talking about His presence. Where are we at? <laughs> oh, verse 8. <laughs> Glory to God. Take me home. <laughs> I mean, did you ever get just, you had enough of it? It's like, okay, I'm ready. No, this is enough. Enough of this foolishness. I'm tired of hearing all of these kids who aren't fed. I'm tired of caring about all these kids who are being abused. Enough is enough. Let's just wrap the whole game up and go on home. 
Well, the only way that's going to happen is if the gospel is preached to every corner of this world. So the quicker we all get it together, the quicker we tell everybody about Jesus, the quicker we can go home. And I want to go home. But in the meantime, yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, from whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, Paul's desire was to conform to the death of Christ. That's why it says, blessed are those who are persecuted. That's why Jesus said, if somebody slaps you, give them the other cheek. If somebody asks you for the cloak, give them your wardrobe. That's why he sent his disciples out with nothing. He wanted to show them that he was the provider. He was trying to teach them. I went out there with nothing. I'll provide everything. But Lord, you're not with us. I'm with you. Not only that, I'm for you. <laughs> Think about where you were and where you are now. Didn't take very long, did it? We kicked, bucked, screamed, scratched. We did all kinds of things. Still fighting for our life. Settling for good. And not waiting for best. <laughs> Oh, and God still blessed us, no matter what. Even our kicking and in screaming. And then we finally get to a place where we go, man, why didn't I do this before? Why, why didn't I just submit before? What was my problem? You. You're the problem. So all you have to do is say yes. You know, you see it on the bumper, say no to dope. Say yes to Jesus. So we have to do is say yes to him. Okay, Lord, I'm letting go and I'm letting you. It's a real simple statement, isn't it? That is promoting death to self. Your confession brings possession. so that we may have the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Please turn the tape over. That's death. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody okay? So death brings resurrection power, doesn't it? Death to self brings resurrection power. 2 Corinthians 4. Glorious. Second Corinthians 4. You know, sometimes God has you wait. He purposely delays things so that you can die more. Believe me, I'm dying. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. Therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, oh I love this. For our light affliction. You try and tell people, man, that's just a light affliction. Man, you don't know what I'm going through. It ain't no light affliction to me. When God looks at it, it's a light affliction. For our light affliction is but for a moment. Oh, man, it's been going on for years, but to God it's a moment. Is working for us. Everybody say, working for me. Working for me. A far more exceeding. An eternal weight of glory. 
So your afflictions, your trials and tribulations are working for you. For you, not against you. You know, we keep blaming everything on the devil. Man, the devil made me do it. Well, the devil tricked me. No, you just touch and agree with what he asked you. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Let me share something with you. You will not be able to look at the things that are not seen until you die to self. Death brings sight. Does everybody understand? In other words, you can't see the things in the spirit realm until you become dead to self. You remember what happened to Saul? He got slammed off his horse. He ended up fasting for three days. He had no choice. Couldn't find where the spoon went. He was blinded. God did not allow him to see the world. He did not allow him to rely on what he could see for three days. Saul knew that he had met God, Jesus. He didn't know what to do. So he stayed in the house, waited three days and prayed. And the Lord sent his servant, laid hands on him. He, Paul got filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost and scales came off of his eyes. See, the Lord had to set Paul, Saul aside to become Paul. How many days did the Lord go? Three days. Mm, and what happened? New life. New life. Sight comes by denying yourself. You cannot see the things of the Spirit while you're mixed up in the flesh. You will try to figure it all out carnally, but you cannot see the things in the spirit if you're caught up in the flesh. The only way that you can see the things in the spirit if you're denying yourself. Because what you'll do, you'll get in an argument and blame somebody else for all of your garbage. You can't see. You can't see the shittle behind that person. And you can't see the shittle that's speaking to you on the next to you. As he's putting the boxing gloves on your hands. You can't even see those. You know, people commit murder. First of all, the devil puts a gun in their hand before they even get it. Because they're yielding to it. When people, when you're out there using and stuff, man, you get high before you even get high. Do you know that? You get high before you get high. When you get high, you get disappointed. Come on. The only excitement we had is when going to go get the dope. After we got it, it was downhill. <laughs> Everything was gone. <laughs> and then we tried it. I mean, then the excitement came back. Again. Okay, let's go get the dope. Yeah, all right. Everybody get together. Put it in your two cents. Everybody tries to split a little piece. They get all excited to go get it. They go get it, and it's <laughs> all over again. Oh, man, they go in that cycle. It's because of what the enemy does. But see, the whole thing is, is we're yielding to him. Because not dead to self can't see the things in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Unless you're really possessed. I was. Man, I saw them all. I could hear doors shut at the airport. <laughs> hallelujah. I knew what was going on in China, let me tell you. I can talk about it now, though, and laugh about it. But I'm telling you, when it was during that time, it was dead serious. I was bound by fear. Uh, they were out there, but they weren't. Every one of them was in this temple. And they were having a party, and I was miserable. I was the only one not enjoying it. They took over this hotel. Paid no rent, but I'm collecting now. Amen. They owe me back rent. Amen. And I'm getting it. Glory to God. Okay, where were we? <laughs> okay, praise God. Let's go somewhere. 
Oh, hallelujah. Second Corinthians. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we are to, we want to be able to see. Now, let me share something with you. Conform to his death allows us to see the things of the Spirit that are not seen by the human eye. Amen? Because we belong to a spiritual order. You and I belong to a spiritual order. We don't belong to this place. It's temporary. So we've got to begin to learn and yield as we die to self to see the things of the other side. We should be living more on the other side than this side even though we're living on this side. And the only way you're going to live on the other side even though while you're living on this side is to be dead to self. Because Jesus lived on the other side even though he was on this side. Because he was dead to self. Remember, he learned obedience. He learned obedience unto death. He learned it. Go to Revelation 14. Oh, to God be the glory. Revelation 14. In 13, would you read it with me? Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Hallelujah! Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor. And their works follow them. That they may rest. In other words, it's no longer struggling. You and I don't have to struggle when we're dead to self. The only reason why we struggle is because we're still alive. We're still fighting for our life instead of fighting for His life. Everybody got it? Dying the Lord, resting in the Lord, rest from our labors that... Our, our works can follow us. Go to Psalm 116. Psalm 116. In verse 15, I think. Oh, you're going to love this one. Psalm 16 and verse 15. Come on, everybody read with me. Highlight it, parenthesize it, I don't care what you quote it. Rewrite it. Come on, read it with me. Is everybody there? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Say it again. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Ooh. That's precious in His sight that you and I deny ourselves. You know, many of, you know, many people go back and try to reconcile themselves to their families because of the guilt and condemnation, and they they feel they need to make it all up and all this other stuff. You know what? They're not dead. They are not dead. They're not allowing God to build the house. Unless the Lord builds the house, we labor what? In vain. That's what got us in trouble from the whole beginning us trying to fix things, us trying to do things. There's got to be a place where you and I are dead to total self to where God begins to move us and we don't move ourselves. That's why people go ahead of God. That's why people marry individuals and, and things get messed up. That's why people go to jobs and get the wrong jobs. That's why people buy the wrong cars, buy the wrong homes and do all kinds of stuff. You know why? Because they can't wait on God. It's because they're too alive. They'll take good instead of wait for best. But precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. It's precious. Go to Proverbs 14.
Proverbs 14 and 14. I think it's verse 32. Yes. The wicked is banished in his wickedness, but the righteous has a refuge in his death. Everybody say, I have refuge refuge. in my death. death. Why? Because God does not associate with self, does he? He associates with his children. So as you die to yourself, his child arises. And there's refuge and your death. Go to Romans 14. Romans 14. Oh, it's good to hear the pages spinning on a Tuesday night. Romans 14. Thank you, Master. Is everybody there? In verse 7. Read it with us. Read it with me. It's me and the Holy Ghost up here. It's okay. Is everybody there? Verse 7. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, that He might be the Lord of both dead and the living. Go to Philippians 1. Philippians chapter 1. Starting at verse 19. Let's read it together. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and hope that that in nothing I shall be ashamed but with all boldness as always. So now also Christ will be magnified in my body whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Go to Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 and verse 6. The Lord is saying, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? The what? The fast. Hmm. Some of us need to fast if you're having struggles denying yourself. Now fasting just does not mean not eating. It means denying yourself. In other words, you can deny yourself from some sweets that are affecting you. You can deny yourself from certain things. You can deny yourself a meal. You can deny yourself from, well, you're basically denying yourself from a lot of things right now. But you can deny yourself from more. But fasting from food and certain things, some watch certain TV programs and things that you can come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Deny yourself from certain people that we still want to communicate with. Deny yourself. That's fasting is denying yourself. Amen? And he says, look at is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of the wicked and undo the heavy burdens? To let the oppressed go free? 
that you, you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? Is that not denying yourself? That you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him and do not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning and healing shall bring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer and you shall cry and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, if you take away the yoke, the thing that's causing you to stumble, that's denying yourself, isn't it? Somebody you're associating with you shouldn't be, you've got to move it away. Anything that brings bondage. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of your finger and the speaking wickedness, blaming everything on everybody else. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. That's when we begin to deny ourselves. See, there's certain things that cause us to dry up that we're associated with. Certain things that we may do, gossip will cause you to dry up quickly. Criticism, pointing to the finger, those cause people to dry up quickly. Blaming everybody else for their own garbage causes people to dry up. No. The Bible says bringing harm to your body, damage to your body. You know, there's people out there that are still smoking cigarettes and stuff like that. It dries us up. It brings damage to your body. What are they doing? They're touching accursed things. People are still out there drinking. They're touching accursed things. Listen, the closer you want to get to the Lord, the cleaner you got to get. You can't expect... Do we have a, a powerful relationship with the Lord if you're still drinking wine or smoking and all, all kinds of other stuff? Why? Because that's satisfying self, isn't it? That's promoting self. That's not denying self. So fasting from these things, we are separating ourselves from them. We're separating ourselves from the world. We're fasting. The Bible says uh, bad company corrupts good habits. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 4, For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. In other words, you and I are groaning. There's times when we get frustrated because we want more of his life and less of our own, and we don't even realize it. And when we don't get it because we're not willing to deny ourselves, we have a tendency to go to the world for fulfillment. Everybody understand that? Oh, hallelujah. He wants this life out of our death. He wants his life out of our death. Amen? Go to Romans 13. Romans 13. Thirteen, eleven. Glory to God. And do this knowing the time that now is the high time to awake out of sleep for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. 
The night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. So you and I are supposed to put on Christ. The only way you're going to put on Christ is to deny yourself. First Peter 4. First Peter chapter 4. first four verses. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking, parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation. Speaking evil of you. Hey, listen, they're going to come against you because you're, no long, you're denying yourself. They're going to call you self-righteous. Well since, you, how, well, since when did you become self-righteous? Since you began to eat from the tree of righteousness. And it's not self-righteous. It's called righteousness. The world does not know what righteousness is. They only know what good and evil is. They don't know what righteousness is. They can't understand that they're blinded to righteousness. But they know what good and evil is. And many people try to do good. They give to UNICEF. They give to a cult. They give about, you know, they don't even know what they're doing. They're thinking they're giving to some good charitable group when half of that money is going out to the terrorists who are killing people. They don't even realize it. You know why? Because they don't know the fruits of righteousness. They only know what is good and what is evil. And if they can't discern what is evil, they think it's good. But evil comes in the deception of good. That's why many people, you try to talk to them about the Lord, man, don't you need Jesus? No, I'm a good person. Good people go to hell. Go to hell. Only those who eat from the tree of life shall have life. Those who eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil shall die. Oh, hallelujah. <coughs> For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. Amen? In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you no longer follow the way they did because you're denying yourself. And they're living on whatever feels good, do it. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'd like to go to 1 Peter 5 while we're here. In verse 6, would you read it with me? Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Casting your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Let me tell you something. That takes death to cast your cares upon Him. You know, it's amazing how people act in front of people, but then when they're not near people, how they act. They make covenants and commitments and lie and cheat and say, yes, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And then nobody's around them and they're doing other things. They have no idea that judgment is coming on them. They have no idea that they've lost the trust of God and He can't trust them because of what we do behind closed doors. Casting your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. And he is looking for someone that is not willing to deny himself. He's looking for someone that's not willing to cast their cares on. Did you ever notice sometimes people's fruits begin to change? You know why? They're holding on to something. 
They're not willing to cast their care. They're trying to fix something in the flesh and the enemy is now deceiving them. Actually convincing them. They become rebellious and rebellious is witchcraft. Then they try to manipulate. They lie. They, and, and sin builds, 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 and builds, and builds. So finally they fall. Or they run from their circumstance. They give up on God. They don't grab hold of Him anymore. They let it go. Oh, hallelujah. Turn to 1 Corinthians 9, please. 1 Corinthians 9. But you can't give up. When God begins to expose, you've got to let it happen. Why? That brings death to self, doesn't it? First Corinthians 9. In verse 27. Would you read it with me? But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So we must be disciplined. Discipline leads to a relationship, relationship to a love affair. Amen. And I want to close at Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Verse 24. Matthew 16 and verse 24. Is everybody there? Let's read this together. Je then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. For what profit it is to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his works. Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing and sitting here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. That's too late then, isn't it? Amen. Death. That's why I daily deny yourself. Daily. Daily deny yourself. Pick up your cross and then follow Him. Remember, life comes out of death. His life will come out of your death. That's how His death gave us life. Amen? Amen. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. We thank you for your word and every seed that's been imparted today, tonight, Lord. I apply the blood of Jesus upon it. And I ask that you allow them to grow and bear fruit for your glory. That we may be witnesses of your power and resurrection power. That we may be the express image of your likeness, your love, and your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.